Okay, so this video will talk about um, the the solve for location of FR. Hey, sorry, <laughs> why am I talking? Yeah, to solve for hydrostatic forces acting on a curved surface. Okay, previously we talked about inclined plane. Now we talk about curved surface. So um, similarly to inclined plane, okay, you have to first find your FR and then you find your location of your FR. Right, so this is the overall summary. I would say it's just two steps, but because within these two steps, there's a lot of steps, is why we, we, we write down so many steps over here. But, um, yeah, to start off, um, you have to first define fx, okay, instead of straight away, you define fr as, as for the inclined plane, okay, because inclined plane, your fr is perpendicular to your plane, so you can straight away get your fr. Then, however, for curved surfaces, uh, you because you need to determine the the um, the magnitude in 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 the mid that that so called poke into the middle of the semicircle, I mean quarter circle. So you have to really find the f x and f f y. So it's in the, it's in terms of f f x and f y. Similarly for them also. Okay, but I didn't do it. So yeah, maybe in the in the next lesson we may do it. <clears throat> but nonetheless, let's, let's let's start this example, okay? So um, okay. Anyway, so our first step is actually to find F R, okay? And then um, but to find F R, we have to first find our F X and F Y, and then you get a resultant force, which is this one, using this formula, the trigonometric formula, and then um, to 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 find for F X, okay? You have to. I'm just gonna talk about um, you know the iteration behind why we why we use this formula rather than um using um F Y formula. So um for F X <coughs> the um the forces itself is um perpendicular to the plane. Okay, the forces is perpendicular to the plane F X. So um intuitionally, if you were to remember, okay, everything is in terms of F equals to R. PA. Okay, if you remember pressure times area equals to force. And then every and then we expand the pressure into rho of the water. Okay, I mean not rho but rather than specific weight of the water multiplied by H. And then multiplied by area. We know that this is the area. Okay, this is the area of the thing. And then um the rho of the water itself, I mean the specific weight of the water. Thumb side will be the pressure. Um. However, in in other words, yeah, this is the only method we can actually solve to for the to understand the amount of pressure that is acting on the area itself. Okay. So this is uh you assume that this is the the three D lah. Okay. Yeah. Into the picture. And nonetheless, um, you may wonder why I didn't introduce you the 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 question. Okay, because um, just want you just want you to know the concept. That's all, and then um, yeah. So with this, you understand that um, you use you use the formula that is is the, that is the same as um, finding the inclined plane. Okay, this is the same formula as this, and we also derive how to get this formula. Okay, so you just um. Firstly, you get your PA, and then your pressure you expand into um specific weight of water times height, and then um don't care about this. Oh yeah, we need to care sorry. <laughs> and then this height is dependable on on the y sine data, which is this y, okay the the length of the 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 gate to the to whatever point that you are actually referring to. And then area you can expand to um the breadth of the item times a small change of by, and then you ch you bring your b outside and you bring your y inside you get an equation like this. Okay, so this this is the breadth just bring it up, and then you bring your y into here. So this is what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> so um it's just a rearranging of stuff like that, and then um after which um. The tricky part is actually the setting of the limits. 
okay when you are you want to find um you know the position of f fr right so it's in terms of the semicircle over here so definitely you're gonna see that it's 1.5 meter radius okay given so this is also 1.5 this is also 1.5 meter so whatever thing is 1.5 meter and then uh, we're gonna set our limits given saying that um something a minus b equals to 1.5 in this case it's 5 meter minus 3 meter right so this this portion here is actually 3.5 3 meter this portion here is 1 meter 1.5 meter radius now so this will add up to 5 meter so this is what we are actually finding so our limit itself will limit as um, from 3.5 to 5 okay graphically from 3.5 meter from this point to 5 meter this point so we are finding 1.5 meter so this is how it is being shown on the you know, diagram itself so the 3 part is setting limits you have to make sure you know how to set the limits and then after which we have after which you just um print off the all all the stuff like that um and then you'll eventually get your 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 forces okay it'll be 0 0.62 mega newton and then um there's nothing fancy over you just have to move your, your values that well but make sure you integrate properly y and integrate y is half y square that is what i'm doing over here so and then after you get this thing uh we are we are really fine we have finally found our fx our force in the x direction so just to summarize before i go to force y in the y direction is that um everything starts off with f equals to pa okay right so this pa will expand and it become like this you set your limits you fill in whatever thing that you want and you get your values for for fx <coughs> For now, Fy, same thing we use this formula. However, the pressure itself is different. We use rho gh because it's in terms of this this length. Okay, it's in terms of the whole. I mean, only here I would say. So it's in terms of this this length. And uh, the tricky part over here is actually um determine the height. Okay, so you took me a while. Okay. So, um, as you can see, the formula itself is based on um, specific weight multiplied by height times A. Okay, the height itself in this case, okay, because your your force is acting acting on the on the bottom of the ship itself. Okay, I just let you know this is a ship. Okay, and then um, maybe this is the the surface. Then you have some some ship stuff. Okay, and uh, the sea that kind of thing. So got paper over here and then they're walking okay so this is how it looks like in a 3d diagram but um just let you know the h itself is the is the so-called the span okay the span of the area okay because you have at this force over here you're actually doing um let's see, at a at one point okay this is the force at one point which is like um at, at here okay but however you are you are, you, are, you have all the forces acting along the the whole ship okay the whole ship so you are having all the forces in this direction so all all, all over here are forces okay, they are they are all forces over here so these are all f y okay these are all f y so the the summation of all this is f y that i would say okay so I hope I get what you you get what I mean. Okay, this is a uh, pretty tricky stuff I would say. But um, nonetheless, uh where am I at? Okay, so um so you know that the height is actually ten, okay, ten meter. Even then your area is actually um one quarter circle area, okay, of this thing. Plus the area of the rectangle. Because you are dealing with the pressure, okay, you are dealing with pressure in the y direction so it's in terms of rho g h right so definitely the the height itself is 
is equivalent because they are actually finding the forces at the bottom of the thing. So this portion rho gh is equal to fy. In other words, okay, I mean it's proportional. Then if you multiply the area, okay, the area of the the whatever, okay, you'll get the forces of fy. Uh, yeah. I think I believe I didn't explain it properly, but you get uh, my idea. So it's just simply knowing what to sub in for H and knowing what to sub in for area. Area is just a one part of the area and the potential area. So if you sub in everything, okay, now now I just sub in only. So you will get uh zero point six nine mega newton, okay. And um, after which, once you get your this is this is forces in the x direction, okay, in this direction, and the forces in the y direction is in, in this one. So you the resultant force is using trigonometry. You can just get this value over here. So um summarize for curved surfaces <coughs> you need to first find fx and fy in order to find a force resultant. And there are formulas for there are two formulas for the different scenario. For fx, okay, you use the formula that is being shown over here. You know what it is really, I'm gonna explain. And then in the y direction, you use this formula. Okay. And then uh, what you need to take note for this formula is how to set the limits that you are looking for. Okay. Make sure you know what you're looking for first before you set your limit. Okay, you have to define properly whether you want to find this portion or this portion. In this case, because um, the why we why you actually analyze this, this water circle is because it's the most bottom of the portion of the thing. If, if let's say, if let's say right, um, if let's say the shape is in this manner, okay. We are now we are gonna find this portion, okay. So it's just so we can simply use the fy. That's it. So the result point is actually fy. I think got fx also. Uh. Okay, yeah, I got fx also. Uh. So the this will be the the one that we think yeah we are looking for. Okay. So instead of this anymore because it's it's in terms of the depth. Okay. Because as you know, the the forces is goes to pressure times area. So the pressure higher. So whatever thing is in terms of pressure and pressure itself is rho g h right. So it's in terms of the height. So we are talking about the height of the of the depth level, you know. So um yeah. For this case, limit is important. Okay, make sure you know where to set limits. For this case, you need to know which is h and which is the area. Okay, the area itself is the area of the of this piece over here. Okay, this is the area multiplied by the span of the whole ship diameter. Okay, so it's one piece by one piece. So it's like you know one piece, one piece, one piece. Two. And then this is why it got a little tricky, but yeah. So um, after which this is it ah. So um. Still haven't finished yet, so um as you know we are we got two parts, okay? There is finding the resultant force and finding the location of the resultant force. So in the next video we'll talk about um how to find our result our location. Okay, so this portion is just only to find the resultant force that's all. So I'll see you in the next video.